The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Sorry. Go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. A little bit of everything and do some singing, some dancing, some chatting with the guests, the skits, the monologues, the comedy. Oh, Wonderful comedy. It really is a lot of Flying through today. Uh, you know what? This is inappropriate. I'm going to have to go. Go with this. Happy Independence Day to our uh, Mexican uh, neighbors to the south. They're independent from France. Normally, this date was easy for me to remember because it was marked by uh, the great Floyd Mayweather, Money May, TMT, uh, beating up a, a fighter of Latin uh, you know, descent. He was, he descent. Yeah, he was a, a Latino. He would beat up, and nobody knew the difference. Uh, at least uh, white people didn't. But he would fight like a Puerto Rican or a Cuban or a something. And most of the time it was on Mexican Independence Day. Floyd didn't care. Somebody that spoke Spanish. That's right. If they spoke Spanish, he'd beat him up on two days. If weekend of Cinco de Mayo. Look it up. All of his fights were on Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Independence Day. He fought twice a year, every year, 5th of May, right around the uh, middle of September. And he did uh, every everybody. He even got Canelo Alvarez in on that list. And I think that was a, a Mexican Independence Day weekend. He fought Canelo way before Canelo was ready. So just got that one under his belt to say he beat him, which is uh, not correct. But, yeah, so that's how I knew. Floyd doesn't fight anymore. And I would go up there to Vegas and watch these fights. And it was a party. Mexican Independence Day is fun. They know how to get it going. I mean, there's drinking and screwing around and everybody's just flying, having the best time ever. And then they'd go watch one of their countrymen get their asses kicked by a black (laughs) guy. And then the Saturday night and Sunday stunk. But the Friday night before was a blast. And their entrances to boxing matches are unbelievable. They've got hats and this stuff's going on and everybody's singing and screaming. Floyd tears the guy's head off and everybody just slinks out of there just like, ugh. <laughs> and didn't Floyd come out? Floyd came out once one in the sombrero. Big old sombrero. Trying to celebrate Mexican Independence Day. He rubbed it in the face. Nobody ever got on him for that, but man, that was... So he was Apollo Creed coming out in the uh, yep. in the old Uncle Absolutely. Sam outfit. Came out in the Uncle Sam outfit and did the whole American thing. He uh, it was yeah. Only he did it to a group of people that hated him, <laughs> and I mean wanted Ortiz to crush him, wanted Canelo to crush him. They Madonna twice. I mean he was fighting anybody he could find that spoke Spanish on one of the two important days in Mexico, getting everybody from Mexico to come up, spend all their money in Vegas, and he'd leave with a suitcase of money and another win. But I don't know when it is now. But it's happy uh, Independence Day. And on Independence Day, we celebrate the best Mexico's had to offer in a long time. El Chapo's house. I don't know if you guys know about El Chapo, but El Chapo was that drug lord that yeah. dug tunnels better than anybody in the world. He had tunnels from houses to jail cells. Amazing. Yeah. So El Chapo, Brady, he's got – it's up for lottery in Mexico, the El Chapo safe house. Uh, the former uh, drug kingpin, El Chapo, worth, uh, the estimated worth was in the hundreds of millions of dollars for him individually, let alone the billions that was going on with this drug deal. Uh, they've taken down all the surveillance cameras. There are over 100 all around his area. Uh, it's, in a, it's in a very nice neighborhood. Um, what town are we looking at? Well, I think it's uh, – hang on, I'll find it. Like Sinaloa it's, or something? Or? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the city. Uh, it's an expansive home in Mexico City's swankiest neighborhood. It's a uh, it, wow! It comes with a private box from the Azteca Stadium. Beautiful. So uh, this is the property is in a Culiacan neighborhood ahead of the in lottery. Mexico City. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I guess. And uh, you can go uh, get it. Uh, it's twenty eight hundred square feet. There are tunnels. Twenty eight hundred. There are tunnels that we have twenty eight hundred square feet. It was on that big safe house. Oh, okay. It wasn't his main residence. Tunnels? Safe house, not of tunnels. Oh. No. Twenty eight hundred square feet of tunnels is not big either. But no. in miles of tunnels. The Marines came in and capped them with cement. So that basically means with a little ambition, 
You get those tunnels back. All you got to do is they didn't didn't crush them all the way, but they led to the jail and God knows where else. So if I got this house, I'd be be tapping the grounds nearby to see. They had a railroad in that tunnel. He could ride motorcycles in it. It was that big. Supplies in there. That's right. So they didn't just blow those up. They're close by. Uh, How much do you think this house is worth? It's yours, Brady, if the price is right. Without going over? Without going over. Throw me a guess. What do you think the safe house for El Chapo's were? 2,800 square feet, uh, swanky neighborhood. Uh, it had uh, In pesos? No, in, in our money, in okay. American money. What do you I'll think go, the house is I'll uh, go 2,800 in Mexico City. I'll go 175000 Swanky place. Wow. Brett? 300000 300 I'll go half a mil. Brady wins. $183,000 wow. is all nice. this thing's worth. One hundred eighty three grand. You can't get a place in Maryvale for $183,000. <laughs> That's incredible, but it's lotto driven, so they're going to give it away to one of the, uh, so a citizen of Mexico. I you still can wouldn't own love the there. safe house. You wouldn't? No. Why not? His boys are still out there. You never know. <laughs> yeah, but that, but he's not. So they don't care about the house. But that you tunnel, don't think he's pulling strings from in, inside? Yeah, but th- what's the house have to do with it? Yeah, what's it? It was his. Wax and nostalgia. <laughs> That's you know all I'm going to say. It, it was point. his. I that comes from an Italian point of view. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to side with Brett. You might be. He's got bad mojo. Oh, yeah. I would do it just to find the tunnels. First day, I'm digging a new pool. <laughs> oh, whoops, we hit something. Don't mess that up. I'll be right there. Leave it there. <laughs> I'll be down in five hours. I, mean, I get that and see where this tunnel goes. If, uh, reading about the tunnels, it's like James Gum's basement in Silence of the Lambs. That thing was like 9,000 square feet. What an unbelievable undertaking. The, you can't include the uh, square footage on the tunnels because it no. wasn't uh, permitted. Right. Well, well, he knew a guy. They follow permits. <laughs> but how in the world? Like, I, you know, Michael and Troy are, are neighbors of mine. Uh, we all know the, the tale of Michael and Troy. Oh, well, I don't know that tale. Spell it correctly. <laughs> and uh, I think I'd notice as a neighbor – if they built a big, like, twink tunnel of railroad cars going back and forth to the <laughs> ain't nobody's biz. You know, I, don't, I think if they're running twinks in underground into their kitchen, I'd notice the construction on this. Twink tunnel. I think I would see the delivery of railroad uh, ties. <laughs> the dirt's definitely coming out one way. Like, right hey, the uh, oh, the dirt's coming out one way in yeah. that house. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, <Brady. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I think I would be over there. Go, hey, your design style seems to have changed from uh, mid-century modern to giant railroad ties. What are you doing with these? Oh, just gonna you know use them as reclaimed wood and shave it down. You need 150 of those for this house. You think? You never know when you're gonna have a shortage. Okay, I suppose that's true. But how oh. that rail system was? Uh, you know, I remember they showed pictures of it. I mean, it was like they're transporting stuff, but it was. It's a railroad on, in underground. I don't not, care how small or demean. Yeah. You're trying to diminish your neighbors having railroad tracks. Well, it wasn't like the Silver Streak was going <laughs> yeah. through there or anything. But it's the There's same no way. Going it's through the there. same way the subway in New York was built. If you ever read about how that happened, dude goes to the city of New York and says, "I got an idea. Since we're crowding up pretty good, to have this system of underground train travel." So he's like, "You're out of your mind. Get out of here with this." He's like, all right. And he ran a clothing shop. He dug a hole, right? built a train track under, and then said, come here, i got to show you guys something. And had the train car in there. This is how it works. Built it himself. He built it himself. And nobody noticed that in the oh. clothing store, this dude was had dug a – do you know how big it has to be to get railroad tracks in there? Yeah. You've got to, it's ridiculous. So I want that house. I hate Mexico, but I want that house. I want I want to goof around in my backyard and go tunk tunk with a shovel and go what's this and then find <laughs> railroad like what is this there's a where does it go my curiosity gets pretty peaked you won't by that go stuff. near Rocky Point God no let alone flying into Mexico City if you don't like Rocky Point I'll fly to Mexico City that's like an airport I'm with him I I, I think I'd go to Me- I've been to Rocky Point yeah. there's I'm a not huge driving. stretch where there's nothing there yeah, I'm not driving through Mexico that's bananas. Yeah, no, but I'm saying in. flying into Mexico City. I've heard just. I'm fine with that. Mexico City, I'm fine with. Fly in, do your thing. Go over to get your El Chapo house. Get in the lottery. <laughs> get in the- Find that railroad. <laughs> Auction number. I just want to know where the railroad goes. You wouldn't do that? You're not? Nope. That's not oh, man. I'm out. Fred is totally out of this. He thinks they're still working underground. <laughs> never yeah, I just don't never. know how you don't notice. And I guess it's because El Chapo's your neighbor. You're like, don't say anything. But I would. 
totally – that's 2,800 square feet? No, that no, no. House? Mexico City from – Yeah, that's from a beast space. of a city. 20 million people. Trying but, to find out where the airport is. Oh, I thought you. that was a map of Westwood. <laughs> West, this, is high class. this is my English class. <laughs> they had railroads under Westwood, probably. I Absolutely. mean, that's to me. The, I mean, he might have done great with the whole drug business, but the ingenuity of digging the under his shower, the whole thing lifted <laughs> off. Miles. Went down in and went to the jail. He could come in and out of the jail. Through shower tunnels. So when he's, in, when, he's in, when he's in jail, he can just go home for a couple hours? He, he was parties. doing it. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, he had get-togethers and stuff. He was, he was keeping it together. Man. He was pretty impressive. I mean, he was doing terrible stuff, but who am I to judge? I'm no angel. <laughs> <laughs> I want that damn tunnel. But, yeah, I, I, you know, the day that I see a backhoe at Michael and Troy's, and I'm like, what's going on, guys? What do you got going on? Digging a pool. Yeah, you got one. What are you Another pool. one. You're putting another pool? What, railroad pool? What do you got with these? What is the, what's with the tracks? It's the last couple miles of our railroad track back to Ain't Nobody's Biz. And then we got another one. It uh, goes over to BS West. Do you guys have underground twink railroad going into my cul-de-sac? Get me on that car. Denny's Highway. The you Twink should, Express. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the Hershey Train Express. Ew. <laughs> Are all the train cars brown? Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> and then they just just whack him gay comes out of the ground <laughs> oh my god they're just popping up out of the earth <laughs> i hope they don't get sidetracked and end up in my yard and stuff but el chapo's house 183 grand you can't get a condo for 183,000. you get el chapo's ask your boy doug what the uh, real estate laws are yeah, he'll buy or sell oh, hey, doug uh, i'll go in halfsies with hopkins we'll go we'll buy or sell that h&h mexico or yeah. el rancho oh, oh, el rancho oh, 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 football season arch and arch <laughs> rancho day god knows what he will buy or sell your drug pin safe house as is the Marines shot it up, too, so they had to fix some of it up. So patching. It's that's a little patching. stucco work. That's easy. Yeah, it's nothing. We've had that before. We got a couple bullet holes in here. Ask anybody who went to Mesa High School. They patched up a <laughs> That was tribal. done that afternoon. Anyway, happy Independence Day, Mexico. We're very proud of you. And, the, and mainly the people that I'm talking to live here now, so I'm super extra proud of you guys for getting out of that dump. Good on you. Trying to find that state you said it was in. Well, I think that's a neighborhood name. Oh, okay, gotcha. I don't know if it's an actual... What is it? Quad, uh, Culiacan? Culiacan. Yeah. It says the property in a quiet Culiacan neighborhood. So Culiacan is a place. Okay. It says maybe a city outside of Mexico City. I don't know where it is or if it's a thing somewhere else. Just search it. It uh, lists <laughs> on Casa and Culiacan, 2,800 square feet uh, in a neighborhood called Libertad or Freedom. The government values the two be- – it's only two bedrooms at 2,800 square feet. That's pretty big bedrooms. Okay. Uh, so it's way far south. According to the map, this up here, way up here, yeah. is Culiacan in Sinaloa. Yeah. And this is Mexico City way down here. Oh, so it's way so far. You're, but you're, so he had a place in Mexico City. Right, this isn't it. I, right. But you are pretty close to the beach. Oh, I'm sure he had a nice view. <laughs> I'm sure it was lovely. Uh, it had been abandoned for years. The Marines did damage when they searched it. Repairs were necessary. Uh, he escaped that time through the tunnels. His freedom lasted a few days on the 22nd of 2014, they found him. This time in his condo on the coast of Mazatlan. Oh, man. He had tunnels. He had a tunnel to the beach? He had tunnels to his place in Mazatlan. <laughs> Where's Mazatlan? That's what I'm trying to find now. <laughs> this dude, most of Mexico is hollow because of him. <laughs> you're, just barely, you're walking on crust right now. This is like <laughs> a creme brulee of a country. You're going to fall in. Oh, yeah, there you go, just to the south. Dude, had tunnels going all over the place. (laughs) I've told you the story of those dudes that I think worked for them that were in my backyard when I had to dig that electric line across my yard. Two white guys for a whole day dug about six inches and could get maybe— Got to caliche, Maybe down to—nobody got to caliche. (laughs) They got to their knees, and they're like, this is hard. They went and hired some Mexican guys. And I'm not kidding, within an hour, there was half a Mexican sticking out of the ground 25 feet from the wall. He had dug— uh, and it was a graded dig. It was six feet deep by the time they Amazing. got. And they did it in less than a day. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And that was just wide enough for a human to walk in. And it was literally grass and then just the, half a Mexican sticking out of the ground. 
I mean, that sounds like a good deal. I mean, for one hundred eighty-five thousand. I mean, because you, you can buy a house in Maryville for three hundred forty. <laughs> yeah, what you're looking at? Yeah, Maryville's place that's oh, average man. for fourteen hundred <laughs> square feet too. Jeez, that's true. See, told you you can't get eight one eighty-three anywhere. Uh, Maryville, Mexico City. You know, yeah, whatever. it's the same. Yeah, <laughs> you run into a lot of the same people. What Brett's saying. <laughs> Anyway, happy Mexican Independence Day. That is a group of uh, tunnel people. And I'm the El Chapo's group. They auctioned my house off for $183,000. It would be disappointing. El Chapo can't be happy with that. 2,800 square feet anywhere in this place. Should increase in value with those tunnels. But... Man, I'd keep those tunnels tied in. May start a museum, a railroad. I can't even grasp that. I'm I'm... Too stupid to understand how railroads work on the surface, let alone subterranean. <laughs> Doesn't add up. You need to move down there, bring Geraldo yeah. with you, yeah. go through them <laughs> oh, tunnels, go, oh man. Oh, my God. You're going to find stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, first things first, I take all the drywall off. I'm, I'm yeah. digging through that attic yeah. like there's no tomorrow, and I'm taking all the drywall off. There's got to be cash stashed. There's somewhere. I'm, I'm going to – I'll be digging In holes like a yeah. crazy person. Yeah. I'm getting in one of those tunnels. Anyway, happy independence. Uh, apparently, it's the capital of uh, – Sinaloa. Culiacan? That's that's what this guy's saying. I'm cool with that. And uh, apparently some of the most beautiful women in the state, but they're tough bitches from what he says. <laughs> All right. That's an email. That, and that's from Oscar, <laughs> that's from Oscar Hernandez. So, oh, you, know, so you know. Yeah, exactly. So you know. <laughs> Look at his last name. Yeah, exactly. They're beautiful, <laughs> but they're tough. <laughs> anyway, well, there you go. Uh, the word is degenerate. 97936. That's what we're shooting for. And the gambling is about to begin. We're going to get our football picks in and our fan duel uh, super challenge. We'll give you the bets we're going to make this week. As I believe, did any of us win a bet Brett, last week? Brett and Brady did the best. No, no, they no. I'm talking about on our weekly bet. Oh, yeah, I lost. Yeah, they did three or four. Our FanDuel bet. Oh, I don't know. You I lost on that. You lost. I won mine. No, yeah, your FanDuel yeah. bet. For yeah, the FanDuel week. bet. I, just, I, I won mine. What was yours? Mine was I took uh, UNLV in the points. Oh, that's right. So you were the only one that got money. Yeah. You didn't win yours. No, I lost. But mine was. I found out later. Mine wasn't as much of a an underdog as I thought it was. I had uh, I had uh, I won twenty bucks. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Run Fournette. I had Leonard Fournette getting two touchdowns in the game last Thursday. And then my two and kick parlay, my yeah. two field goal parlay. Yeah, you doubled up for some dumb reason. You made double bets on a single bet bet day. So but your I'm, bet on the Bears game would have been a better bet to make yeah. the. Ending, oh, I didn't know about it until the Bears game right? happened. Yeah, I did it on Thursday. What so was we'll, it ending anything other than? Yeah, the first drive had to end in anything other than a field goal touchdown or punt. And it ended with an Andy Dalton interception. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Everybody knew that was going to happen. So, anyway, uh, we'll get our FanDuel bets out. Degenerate is the word you need, though, because you've got 20 more minutes to throw that out there for the De Niro Double Down. Uh, happy Mexican Independence Day. It's 98. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? 98. I'm not cool with this at all. K-U-P-D. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet! Mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.